And so last week, I came to you all to talk to you about making room for the Lord. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to lay down weights in the sin that trips us up, if you want to say it in a modern lingo. <laughs> um, the weights and the sin that does so easily beset us, the things that hinders our walk with the Lord. I'm not on here to continue on that, but I do hope if you watched that video, I hope that, it, first of all, it encouraged you. Um, I hope you didn't just feel beat on the head because that was definitely not my intention. Um, I only share my experiences and testimonies and struggles um, in hopes to let you know, hey, I'm not, I'm not alone. And uh, we're in this thing together. I come to you as a sister in the Lord. Um, and none of us have made it yet. So we're on this walk. And if somebody has um, overcome things in their life and the Lord has given them wisdom and insight on certain areas um, in their life, I love to hear about it. And uh, I want to grow. And so that's why I come to you because I hope to be that for somebody else as well. And so I'm hopeful that some of you have been intentional about laying weights down over this past week um, since that video, not because of me and what I said, but because of the message resonating in your heart and your spirit. And you know that, hey, God's speaking because I've been warring inside. I've been fighting this over and over. And I'm so tired of living in regret and not giving it everything I've got. And as I mentioned in that video, there's always, you know, there's obstacles. We're not perfect. It's not about that. But it's about us looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We put our trust in him. We give our love and affection to him. And we run after him. But, so that's not what I'm on here to talk about tonight. Or if you're listening to it in the morning, afternoon, whatever. But um, I wanted to just bring just a, a thought or two. <laughs> ha ha, funny, because it normally goes much longer than that. But but I do have, I'm hoping to make it a, a more of a brief um, thought to share. Um, just about once we've got those things out of the way and we can kind of see clearly Maybe we still find ourselves in a waiting period, though. Maybe we are trying to learn the voice of the Lord more. Maybe we have things in our hearts, on our minds, in our spirit that we have felt God has been pouring our attention to. Maybe we felt a passion and a stirring inside to do certain things for the Lord. Because like I said in the last video, he does distribute gifts to his children. We're all different. We're unique. He gives us gifts to operate in. And there's passion that comes along with that. Doesn't make the road easy though. And so when we are waiting, maybe we felt like we got a brief glance at the future. You know, just saying like maybe not saying we know exactly how it's going to be, but you know, if you have something on your heart that you feel stirred and you really truly feel like the Lord's wanting you to do this thing, you can get a picture of how it's going to be. But then it doesn't happen like that. You're like, God, I thought I heard from you. Now I'm confused. Why isn't it not happening like I thought it was going to happen? Why why am I not surrounded by the people I thought I'd be surrounded by? Why do I not have that thing in my hands that I thought you promised? Why, Lord, is it such a struggle to do the thing you've told me to do? Lord, I'm trying to obey, but I don't get it. Like, Lord, I thought I'd be there by now. And it's like 
We're always reaching towards his destination. We're always just struggling to get to a certain destination. It's always, we're looking to the future and we need to look to the future, you know, and not just sit idly by, like letting our lives just go by without any purpose in mind, any goal in mind, you know. We're always reaching towards something and that's okay. But what's not okay is to always be looking to the next thing and miss what's right in front of us. So often we want the reward. We want to hold the finished product in our hands. And we want to skip the process. And you've probably heard messages like this before. This may be nothing new to you, but maybe this could just be a reminder of what I'm talking about tonight. Because I have been there. <laughs> I've been so frustrated. I'm like, God, the years have went by. And this thing that I have prayed about, this thing I've talked about, this thing that I have written down in my journal for years, Lord, it's still not happened yet. Now, I do want to bring some hope before I continue. There's a lot of things in my life that I, I, I believe are promises from the Lord, actually. I don't think that he puts those passions in our hearts for no reason. I do believe that he gives us gifts and he speaks in, into our spirit, you know, um, maybe even, you know, allows us to get a glimpse of what he's got for us down the road. And, you know, our time is definitely different than God's time. <laughs> but I can say, even though a lot of the things that I've had on my heart, and I look back and, you know, I'm like, man, I, I, I'm still not there yet. But I can say this, I'm not maybe where I want to be, but I'm definitely not where I was. And you've probably heard some people say stuff like that. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm also not where I was. And I'm thankful. I'm very thankful for that. I've come a long way. And there are some things I believe the Lord has brought to the surface, even this year. And yes, by this year, I mean we are at the end of January and... Uh, 2023 and and uh so you know we're still at the beginning of this year and I can see things coming up to the surface now I'm not saying you know it's all coming together all I believe it's a process in life you know it, it, but as I have laid things down and I have focused more on what I need to focus on. I've got my priorities more in order. I'm not saying I've uh, done everything right every single day. Um, it's so easy to get off track. But as I have laid things aside and really been intentional about getting my focus where it needs to be, I have seen things come up to the surface. And there's there are some things that I have felt the Lord speak in my spirit Things that I didn't feel a release yet for years. I held on to certain dreams and goals, you know, things to reach towards, things to pursue, things to one day fulfill, you know, good things, godly things, things that I really believe the Lord's called me to do. I felt a hesitation for years, although I've struggled and I work towards it every once in a while. Um, I just never felt that full, complete release to move forward. And this year so far, as I've, like I said, been um, focusing in more, as I have laid other things to the side, and I've really been intentional about putting my time where it needs to be, I felt the Lord speak to me one night about a certain thing that I have had on my heart. And I actually got up in the middle of the night to do something. 
And as I sat down, I felt like just these words had come to my mind. It's time. It's time. And the feeling that came along with that was excitement. I was a little nervous because I'm like, uh oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to let myself down. I don't want other people down. I, I don't want to make promises that I can't keep and this and that. But there was the good outweighed the bad. Um, faith began to rise up. Passion began to rise up. Um, motivation and just something to look forward to. And I've been very intentional, not for a pat on the back, but if you knew my struggles in my personal life, um, you would know how important this is to me that um, I've been more intentional even about, you know, getting up earlier um, to work towards things that God's wanting me to work towards. We say we don't have time much of the time, but oftentimes we're just so low on our faith. We lack motivation because our goals feel so far out of reach. And so we just, we just let life pass us by. We get in this rut, going through the motions every day, day after day passes. We're just doing enough to get by. We're, we feel like we can't ever catch up. We feel like we're just overloaded with so many responsibilities, you know, things that might seem unpleasant. And we're just, we're just letting life pass us by. Instead of reaching towards the things that God has put in our heart to do, and so, the reason I'm sharing this, I'm no, maybe professional, <laughs> I'm no coach. Um, who knows, one day that could be the case, but no, I, I do wanna come to you as an encourager. You know, some people feel funny about these things, but I personally like it. Taking personality test. I understand you're not supposed to let something just define you, but it's good to sometimes learn more of yourself to know how to help serve others, you know, in your walk with the Lord, to help others in their walk with the Lord. And so I've taken multiple tests over the years, personality tests, and something consistent is encourager. Either the word encourager or something along those lines. <laughs> Look at me, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking with my hands. I do that all the time, but an encourager, and I embrace that, it, even more so over the past little bit. I embrace that, and it just makes more and more sense to me. So, I come to you with my stories, my testimonies, my struggles, because I want to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Maybe help shine a light on some things that you just need a friend to tell you. You know, maybe you haven't had anybody speak into your life in a little while. Or maybe you have somebody that has struggled just as much as you felt like you have. And they don't really have anything to offer. Maybe they are just staying in, in a rut themselves. And they're discouraged. They are walking in defeat. And, and it, you know, if, if you have two negative people or two people that are just struggling, it's hard to help each other when you're both struggling. Many times the way it works is if you have one that's struggling, but one that is, you know, feels the victory, like in a marriage, like me and my husband, it seems like it's not often that we're both down, um, but we help each other. And a two is better than one. Um, so anyway, so I come to encourage you I want to hopefully be somebody that'll speak into you to say, hey, listen, I, I don't have it all figured out, but I've come through this and I've come through this and I've come through this. And I'm determined that we're going to keep going on this walk. And I want you to get that determination in you. Let's be persistent. Let's not be willing to just give up, to throw in the towel. Let's not be willing to give in, uh, to going through the motions of life. There's so much more that God has for us. And so let's shine the light on those things, whatever it may be in your life. 
that has got you just going from day to day, just struggling, and you don't have the motivation, you don't, you don't feel inspired, you, you really, your, your prayer life is, is lacking, you, maybe it's non-existent, well, that's where it starts, right there, you know, we can have all the self-help stuff out there, self-help books, people put it down, let me tell you, I, I can't help it, I like them, sometimes, um, you know, it is what it is, I understand that the Word of God is the most important book, absolutely, because it, it's different from all other books because it is alive. His word is alive. And, uh, you know, as we read it, it just, it's amazing how it just breathes into us. It speaks into us. It shines a light on things that are alive. And the spirit works through us and, and through, through his word. It's like a, a package and just uh, illuminates things. Uh, really shines the light in, zooms it in on areas that only God could show us. He gives us wisdom when we ask him. He cares about us. He cares about you. He cares about where you're at. He knows if you've got yourself in a mess. I've been there. Actually, I was just writing down not long ago, Lord, I was writing down my prayers. God, here I am again. <laughs> Lord, you know, I get so frustrated with myself. Cause I get myself in this mess and this mess and this mess and instead of just waiting and you know acknowledging you in all my ways which I've come a long long way but sometimes I get frustrated because I know that there's a um, practical side of life and I know that sometimes you know we won't use the the tool that's right beside us and so I'm like Lord is it just that I'm not using the right tool? What is it? You know, uncover it. And so, anyway, I've uh, been there many times, but but God will do that. So, it starts with prayer. It starts with reading the Word. And, you know, um, Christian-based books, I would, I would encourage that as well. But, and then listening to, to just faith-building messages. Keep yourself plugged in, okay? I want to help encourage you to do that, to get where you need to go. So, Last week, I talked about laying stuff down because we're going to make room for the Lord and what He's wanting to do in our life. There's so much more, and we're missing it because we've been just going through the motions or chasing things that don't amount to anything. We've been even chasing pleasures, you know. Listen, there's nothing like being in the will of God and chasing after Him. Truly, and I truly mean that. I can't say that if I've not experienced it. That I have and it's there's just nothing that compares to that and so um, listen in order to be prepared for the things that God has for us that he's wanting to do in our lives we gotta we gotta get prepared for it how do we do that well of course like I said I already said praying and reading the word and you know listening to faith building messages that's gonna help build our faith because faith comes by hearing Okay, hearing by the word of God, you know, if we don't stay plugged in, even throughout the week, even when we're not at church, but at home, in the car, instead of wasting time, we can be using our precious time that God has given us while we're even getting ready, you know, or while we, instead of watching TV, hey, I'm not knocking that, you know, as long as it's clean and uh, nothing that could, uh, you know, cause a wall to come up between you and the Lord, you know, because he's holy, um, but instead of doing things that might not seem bad, but maybe they're just not benefiting you, how about you, if you want to get on track, if you want to get to where you want to go in the Lord, if you want to experience that place and you want to stop living in regret and wasting time, start cutting out things and, and replacing it with things that's going to benefit you in your walk with the Lord and then a year later or even less, you're going to see such a change in your life and, and you're going to be able to look back later and see how far God has brought you and you'll be thankful that you surrendered those areas of your life. So in order to be prepared for what God's got for us and, and not just the, 
the heavenly kingdom that he's got prepared in the mansion that he said, you know, he went away to repair. Um, I'm saying, saying even earthly, the abundant life and the, the blessings that he's got for his children to walk in. Um, and I know it's so much more than material, but um, I could go on in that, but I'm not going to. But I just want to encourage you to make room, like I said in the last video, but also prepare. Prepare by being intentional with where you're spending your time. This is changing my life because I'm starting to realize more and more the importance of being a good steward, not only of the possessions that God has given me, but a good steward of my time. Lord, I have so much work to do. I gotta be a better steward of my finances. Gotta be a better steward. Steward is like, if you're not familiar with that term, it's like being a manager. Like he is the owner and he allows us to manage things. So if, if he's given us these things, we need to be responsible and do well with managing every area of our life. And my goodness, I, like I said, I have so much work to do, but it's like he shows me bits and pieces at a time because I get easily overwhelmed. <laughs> and so, but a steward of our time, I said before, I've wasted so much time. It's, I regret it so much and I'm embarrassed about how much time I've wasted, but I, I can't go back and change it. I can only help what I do right now. Like I mentioned about that song that I wrote, not anymore, I've said that in the last video. I can help what I do right now and from this day forward. So I gotta make preparation. I wanna get my field ready to receive the rain. And that's from a movie, Facing the Giants. I mention it often. Um, that's a quote though, prepare your field to receive the rain. And so what is it in your life that you long, so you, you, you're desperate to have that desire fulfilled, godly desires, but it seems like you've waited so long. Well, if you're just letting time pass by, you're not doing anything to prepare for it. I heard it like this earlier. If the opportunity comes knocking and you're not ready, it'll be too late to get prepared. And so when the opportunity opportunity shows up, you want to be ready for that opportunity. So I'm getting some things in my life prepared for whatever next thing God has got. Now, I'm not talking about, um, you know, even specific things. I'm, I'm not trying to get out of anything that I'm in now, but God always has doors that he's wanting to open to his children that no man can shut. And there's always a new assignment once we finish the last one. And so instead of only being here and now, we should be present where we're at, fully engaged. Not only that though, we should be preparing always um, not just educating ourselves, like, you know, opening a book, educating, but like truly being involved and being willing, being teachable to learn all we need to learn, prepare as much as we can for whatever next thing God may have. And you and him know, that's between you and the Lord, what things he has given to you to focus in on. Let him show you, let him speak to you. And you probably already are thinking of what those things are um, because, you know, you've lived with yourself so long and you know the things that um, you desire, the things that you, you're you good at, you know, that he's gifted you to do and just sharpen those skills. And so anyway, I just want to encourage you to do that. And you're going to see a change just like I'm seeing a change. And I'm not going to get specific because I want to, to work on these, those things so much that other people begin to notice without me having to say, hey, look what I've been working on. That's where I'm at in my life. I just want other people to see it. Instead of me announcing it, we won't have to announce it. It'll announce itself. People will notice the changes that take place in our life when we begin to get serious and prepare. And I heard it like this. I'm gonna go to it. I, I wrote a note several months ago during a preaching a message that I heard uh, about not holding back. And I'm going to end very soon. Um, but it talks about becoming familiar with your weapon. So we all go through things, um, of course. 
Duh. We go through many battles. And then there are times of rest. And if we're not careful, in those seasons of rest, we, were, we will overindulge in, in the pleasures of, of the rest. Rest of whatever that could be. If you've got a financial break, if you've got a, um, you know, I don't know. Well, I could go on. I, we could talk about whatever, many examples. But whatever that rest has been, after a long battle, you've had a victory, praise God. But if we're not careful, we will lay our sword down. We will get complacent again, and we will uh, be caught off guard by the next battle that comes. And so, um, but in the message, I wrote this down. When, in the times when there's not a battle, get familiar with your weapon, and you practice. Get familiar with your weapon. Never lay your armor down. Never lay the Word of God down, you know, figuratively speaking, in your, in your heart. Meditate, read, pray, stay connected. Don't get too comfortable because there's always a battle brewing. That's not to bring fear. It's just the reality as children of God, which it rains on the just and the unjust. But you don't want to be caught off guard because if you're preparing and you're staying in touch with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis, then he's got you. You won't have to be like, oh, God, forgive me. Lord, this stuff I've allowed in my heart. Lord, just, you know. You won't have to go into all that. Not that there aren't times, you know, that we don't have to, you know. But if we're prepared and we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, we'll be walking in victory. And what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn around and make it good. That's what his promise is. And it won't take so long. You know what I mean? We put off our victories many times because we weren't staying in touch with the Lord. Um, I heard it like this as well, and then I'm going to end. Um, I try to cut this off very, very shortly. But God is our business partner. Now, you might not have a business, but the business partner in our life, in every decision that we make, we consult with Him before any decision. We acknowledge Him in all of our ways. I know the times that I have stepped ahead and not felt peace because I did not consult with him, you know, and I got myself in a mess. And thank God he's gracious and he's merciful and patient. He puts us back on the path when we cry out to him. But we can consult with him. We can do this thing as a team. Although he is the pilot, not the co-pilot. He's the pilot. He's driving this thing. Um, but he's a co-worker. We work together and he leads us. And he guides us. And he wants to be involved in every area of our lives. And so, my goodness, if we will stay connected to the vine, we're going to watch the fruit come. We're going to watch the fruit come. And we will be prepared for the blessings ahead, the battles ahead. And God will give us wisdom to fight those battles. Um, he will fight them for us. But he will give us wisdom to be uh, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. So, anyway, I hope maybe that encouraged you uh, this evening to, or whenever you're watching, to uh, to make some decisions to be be intentional. Get intentional. Stop going through the motions, and pick up your sword and get engaged. Be fully engaged, so you won't be caught unaware. And you'll be prepared as you're out on the battlefield. My goodness, we can do this. <laughs> Just want to encourage you. We can do this. And listen, don't get discouraged. Pick yourself up. Know that the past is in the past. And we're going to go forward as we are laying things down. And now making room for the Lord. And now we're being intentional with being prepared for what God's got in our uh, in our lives in the future. So anyway, I love you all. I'm going to cut this off. It's almost 30 minutes long. And uh, that's half the time that I spent on my last video. <laughs> so anyway, comment. You can email me at ashley.duncan1993 .ashley at yahoo.com. Still under my maiden name. 
If you have any questions, comments, testimonies, whatever, I would love to connect with you. Hope you all have a good day and be blessed.